Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. Hope you're well. Here we are then. Cheltenham, Eve, Eve. We're in the conservatory today, as you can see. The lighting's not great. I do apologise for that. We've never been big on production values, have we? So... Don't matter, does it? Um, yeah, and apologies if you, it's raining here, so apologies if that sound comes through. But yeah, Cheltenham Eve, Eve, we started in September, didn't we? It's been a good ride, lots of ups and downs, and here we are on the sort of precipice of it all. So what we'll do today, we'll, we've got it. I'll put the rest of the bets, we'll do like anti-post roundup, and I did have some people asking for multis. We'll just have one little go at trying to retire. Eh? <laughs> and I'll leave the rest of the multis to yourself. To be honest, like I, said, I mentioned a while back, you know, I'll be sat there with my list of horses for the day. I might have two or three names scribbled down for each race. Sometimes I just ask Leah to pick me three out for a Trixie because... You kind of know these winners on there, but they're not always the ones you think you, you fancy the most, are they? So it's very hard to group them together, isn't it? You know, I, I like to use sort of a bit of strategy where I guess, you know, looking for relatable things like horses that like maybe similar ground or that tie together on the form lines and things like that. You try and give yourself some sort of edge. But anyway, we'll do that at the end. So what we'll do, we'll just run through the whole meeting and, you know, we'll go through the bets we've had and the bets we're having today. I won't go into too much depth about each horse, it's just a kind of roundup really. I think you know my thoughts on most of them, I suppose the new ones that I'm having, I'll chat a little bit about them, but keep it brief. You might need a flask or two anyway, like, but we'll see, we'll see how we can get through it fairly quick i know your time's precious now isn't it this close to Cheltenham you know you don't want to be watching me babble on for hours do you you know right then so we'll start at the beginning the supreme yeah no bally burn no just an easy picking 20 points up off the floor race to kick off with um right these are just my views, so if I say something unkind about a horse you like, <laughs> don't take it personally, don't worry about it. I get more wrong than I get right, so if you look at it like that, it's maybe a positive for you, <laughs> okay? But I'll just sit, tell you how I see things. For this Supreme right, basically, I think it's down to three horses, really. Uh, I can't have... Firefox coming here off a bad run like that. I don't like that in a Supreme. And I can't have Slade Steel. Um, I just... I can't have Slade Steel winning this when they could have took this with Ballyburn, if you know what I mean. It's like... Nah. Surely they'd have ran Ballyburn here if they thought Slade Steel were going to win it without Ballyburn. Surely they won't leave a Supreme behind like that I'm sure Ballyburn would have won this I'm sure they're sure it would have won this so to me they must fancy the chances against Slade Steel in this so I'll give Mr Giff a small squeak I would have to Forrest uh, he jumps fantastic loves running he loved the ground but stepping up from a Limerick Maiden to a Supreme, that's a big step in it. Um, but I think he'll get a good go. I think he'll run well. But again, I don't see as Paul would ride Tully Hill in this if he thought he were going to struggle to beat Mr. Giff when he could have ridden Ballyburn in it, you know. So... I think it's between Tully Hill, Mystical Power and Jericho. And I'll tell you what I'd written down. I wrote down 
went through it well one night had a good look at it watched the races again i wrote down tully hill soft to heavy all right good to soft to soft mystical power and jericho and that's kind of how i see it i think to me tully hill's like a, a stayer but if it comes up soft to heavy he's he, he's just gonna he could just gallop him into the ground i think you know like an appreciate it yeah maybe not win it like appreciate it but well win it like him but not as far like you know but if it's decentish ground if it's like you know good to soft to soft or soft to good to soft even i think he might get done for speed by the other two i prefer them now as luck would have it it's completely borderline right now it's soft so by tuesday it depends is it going to be heavy side of soft or good side of soft i don't know we're doing this now i'm going to take an educated guess it's going to come up soft best and in that case we'll go tully hill now at the beginning of the season i think if you asked anybody in willie's yard they'd have told you the best novice hurdler for this year were ballyburn I think they'd also told you the second best one with Tully Hill. Now, I know his first one were a disaster. They dropped him to two mile. They were much better, but his jumping weren't great. Last time, his jumping were better, but still not brilliant. That's what I mean. On sort of decent ground, I think he'd get found out here. But if it comes up soft, heavy, it won't matter so much, you know being so slick at your hurdles the better the ground the more important it is but if it's soft heavy you can afford to pop away a little bit you know and that stamina will just come into play so it really does to me hinge on the ground hard to be definitive sat here on sunday say so like any betting the closer you get the more information you've got that better it is like you know but we're not playing that game are we so we've got to put it up now we're going five points to the all seven to two uh william hill that is i've just checked all these prices before i did this video so yeah no, i didn't think i'd be uh tipping to the up for the supreme a while ago <laughs> been that sort of season aren't it I mean, you play the race how you play the race, don't you? I mean, I've... yeah, right. Next race, Arkle. Right. Yeah, no Fasal Vega, which I think's wrong. I'd really, I'd really fancy him in this, I would. And we lost one bad favourite for me, Marine National, and being replaced with another one here in Gaelic Warrior. I cannot have this horse in the Arkle. I, I just can't. He's coming off a bad run. On the same track, he's struggled that the last couple of years. Don't tell me that's... Oh, he's run well. He's, he's, oh, he's got to be off 129 in an handicap. And... Like I say, behind Impera Pass last year, I think the race just fell apart that Ballymore. I don't think he beat anything that day. As much as the form might look decent on paper, he, he just weren't. It weren't. I can't have him in an Arkle on this track. I can't. And he's coming here off a bad run. I've, I wouldn't back him at 10 to 1. I wouldn't. That's just me. You might like him and he might win. But that's my view anyway, you know. So, I like the two we chose. We went, we've went. we got a point on Quilixios at 10s and three points JPR1 at 12s. Now, the better side of soft it gets, the more I'd like JPR1. And the heavier side of soft it gets, I'd like Quilixios. 
so we're kind of going to level it up a bit here and we'll have another three points on Quilixios at seven to one general. So we've got like four points Quilixios, three JPR one. That's how we'll play that race. Yeah, Quilixios, Henry de Bromhead in it comes here in good form. He's deadly with two mile chasers around Cheltenham. He's going to be prominent, but he stays well. Going to have to stay in this circle. I think they're going to go a good pace in likely soft ground. So, yeah, I like Quilixios here. Uh, JPR one, he's a light player, he is. He just, I think he's got that turn of foot, JPR one, that burst of speed, but it would be seen to better effect on better ground, I think. But you know, as long as it's bottomless, he's there with his chance. But I would slightly favour Quilixios the way the ground's shaping up at the minute. Right then, Ultima. Uh, we haven't had a bet in this, so here we go. We're having three points on Trelawne at 9 to 1, 3 6 5, and a point each way on the Goffer at 6 to 1, 3 6 5. I think he's six is everywhere, I think. Right, yeah. Um, Trelawne. Improved dramatically last year when stepped up to three mile in a valuable handicap hurdle at Utoxeter. Kim Bailey's kept him short of three mile this year. He's just been running round two and a half miles. He's got a nice bit of course form there with Ginny's Destiny and Kribilly, who were both fancied. And yeah, he looks, you know, he should improve dramatically again stepped up to three mile over fences the ground won't bother him whatever the ground is um when he won that hurdle race in utoxita he committed him way way out and he stayed really well he got understandably a little bit tired after the last but he did commit some way out there so yeah we like Trelawne. uh the goffer it's just the price. I mean, we've got a point each way on him at sixes. If someone gave me a grand and said, put it on the ultimate and don't lose it, I'd have 500 each way the goffer. I would. I think he's going to be tough to kick out. You're getting the first six now, aren't you? He came fourth last year in the best ever ultimate, better than this. He's £2 lower this year. Last year... He kind of came here as an afterthought after taking the 2-5 valuable handicap at the DRF. Then he just came on to here. This year, I think Gordon's work back from this race has been targeted at this. So I don't see how you can kick him out of the frame. The only thing wrong with him is the price, 6-1. to one. I think on the day you might get 8s maybe. But... Um, yeah, I did want to back him each way. So we'll have the smaller bet on him being being 6 to 1, and we'll have a little pop at Trelawne at 9s, you know. Right, the Mare's race, we've got four points on Lozzy Mouth at 7 to 2, and a point each way on Tell Me Something Girl at 28s. Now, you know, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this without market for Tell Me Something Girl. And it's come up today. Unfortunately, time in this video, that she opened up 12 to 1 in that. She's been kind of smashed into 17 to 2. Best price at Hills. So we'll have three points on that, 17 to 2. Also, just caught my eye on this. I say we'll have it for the win because we have got her each way in the outright market aren't we as long as she don't come fourth which would be a bit annoying so we'll just have three points win at the 17 to 2. the other one that caught me eye in this market were hispanic moon i think this is a bit overpriced i think the betting's wrong on this myself um you can get 20s at hills i can't get hills but we can get 18s at 365 and we'll just have a point each way on that as well 
Hispanic moon at 18s. One well first time up, another Henry horse. Don't know what happened the second time. The last day, yeah, beat Gollum so well. Look good. He'll enjoy the soft ground. Darrow keeps on this. I think he's rode this in preference to Langtree Lady, who is shorter in the betting, so I think that's a bit wrong. I do. So I'll just have a point each way on him at 18s without Lozzy Mouth, yeah. Boodles. If there's one race we could lose at Charlton, it would be this for me. A stupid race this is. Do you know when they won about losing a race a while back, they were like, please let it be the Boodles. But no, they kicked out that novice handicap chase and I loved that race. That were like one of my favourite handicaps and they stuck with his bloody Boodles. <laughs> okay. Bearing in mind, I've won this once and I've come second the last three years, so maybe don't be following me on in this one. I've gone with the pin has fell down <laughs> on Ozzy Patir, who having three points on that at 14s, 365, and we're having two points on Nara at the same price, 14s, uh, Hills, Hills, Coles, and Boyles, I think, 14s. Ozzy Patia ran well, eye catching first time up. It's Martin Brazel in it, and Martin Brazel in these handicaps, you know, he's so good, he's so good. And I've got to be honest, it's mainly that reason I've gone with this horse. But he were eye catching first time up. Um, I mean, Martin Brazel, he, he come close in the Ultima last year, didn't he be fast or slow? And the last two years is it the crossbar ante in the Coral Cup. He's not often far away, Martin Brazel, when he targets a horse at a race. And he looks like he's targeted this Riozzi Patti, so that'll do me. <laughs> ran eye catching first time out and the other sort of half decent race it ran were at Christmas at Leopardstown in that good race where he ran I think he was four length behind Batman Girac and he's seven pound better off I think he's a little better off at the weights he kind of made a move early on and sort of dropped back again and then sort of stayed on again but yeah we'll go with that Nara she ran in that race didn't she that's provided for the last five winners of this and I thought she moved kind of eye-catching through the race, never really put into it. I think tongue-tied for the first time. JP, Henry de Bromed. Yeah, we'll have a little go on that. So that's, that's more than enough at Boodles. Three points, Ozzy Patia. Two points, Nara. Four miler, we've got Embassy Gardens. Five points at 11 to four. And Corbett's Cross, two points, five to two. I like that. I do, I can't have any of the other horses here. I just think I'm looking at that race to be the biggest winning margin and I kind of think it might be this one. I would between this, the Browns and the Ballymore, you know. And with this being a three mile six novice chase and Corbett's Cross, his main rival, a bit of a dodgy jumper, it's just possible Embassy Gardens could win this by like a fence or something, you know. Um, I haven't played it yet. I'll have another look tomorrow. But yeah, like that race. I do see it between those two. I really like Embassy Gardens, I do. Right. Wednesday then. Bally Bingham. Right, out the recycle bin then. We've got this race. Ballyburn two points eight to one. Il Atlantic two point sixteens. That'll do that. Ballyburn just wins, don't he? Um but we're not going in again at odds on. That's a nice little ticket, two points eight to one. Browns, fact to file, we've got two points at twenty eights. 
we've got stay away Fay two points at 16s and Monty Star two points at 45s. It works out at I got a point at 50s and a point at 40s, didn't we? Yeah, we've got to love that position. That looks nice. We'll leave that be. Coral Cup, Summer Jess, five points at six to one. And I should have put this up by now, but I didn't. But I'm putting it up now. Can't let it go. Built by Matt Ballymore, Martin Brazel, Coral Cup again. Martin Brazel, got to have a bit on him. So I'll have two points at nine to one. Coles and Ladbrooks. Uh, he has been well back. But better late than never. We'll have two points on him at nines. Uh, I like them two horses in that race. I think they could be grade one horses, you know. Um, 140 and 139. Uh, I mean, built by Ballymore. We, we gave him a mention before he even won a race, didn't we? When he just finished out the back somewhere, we said, look out for this horse. And here is Coral Cup. He's hit the bar the last twice. We've got to go. We've got to have some more on him. Oh, just one thing I forgot to mention about Ultimate. Mon Beg Genius is there. It, he's found his way into it. You couldn't fancy him on his last run. He does. If he ran the race he ran last year in this, I think he'd probably win it. And I will have a bit of change on him, just for my own sanity. But I'm not putting him up here. But yeah, just, just in case, like, you know. Right, yeah. Champion Chase, we've got El Fabiolo, five points, two to one. We're looking good here. I think Wednesday's the new Tuesday. <laughs> I'm liking Wednesday. Grand Annual, we've got three points, Saint Roy at sevens. As I mentioned, might be best holding off and getting maybe a bit of tens each way on the day on that. Um, Mascada, we've got two points at fourteens. Bumper, right, we've got one point the yellow clay at 12s and one point Cantico at 14s. I'm not going to tidy this up today, I'm just going to leave it be, but I'll tell you my thoughts on this. And it depends, you've got to watch for the uh, decks tomorrow and the jockey bookings. Because the horse I'm kind of, think I'm going with is Jalon Dudery's, but you want to know Jack's on him and if the Decks come through tomorrow and Jack's on him. I'll back him straight away, so be quick with that because the price will come down pretty sharpish. I think he's round about sixes now. I don't mind taking fives or even nine to two, but just get on him. If you if you want to back him, get on him as soon as you see Jack's name next to him. If it's not next to him, then the price is going to go the other way, isn't it? And the reason being for that, all over Jeroboam and Michan, I think that were the best bumper form this season. Now, the yellow clay ties into that. You ought to know ties into that. And also, Jalon Duderys ties into that in a line through Redemption Day. So, they're the sort of three horses I'm looking at for this. If Jack's not riding Jalon Duderys, I think my bet's going to be you ought to know. And I'll probably top up a little bit on the yellow clay too. So there you go. So so we'll just for our purposes we'll just leave it be for now. Right, first day then. What are we doing here? Twenty four minutes. All right, halfway through. Turners, right. This is where the special one is, isn't it? Vassar Vega, we've got a point at 12s, a point at 7s, three points at 5s. Oh, we'll leave it be that race. Potemps, Claytus Pool Law, we've got two points at 9s. We'll finish this race off today. We'll have another point on him at 8 to 1. That's at Hills. Holes and Ladbrokes, I think. So we'll have a little top up on Claire's Pool Law. And the other one we're going to play is also Gordon Elliott, Giggins Town, and it's Farouk Delane. 
and we're going to have two points each way at 16 to 1 paddy power. So we talked about Claire Spoolo before. Farouk Delane, I mentioned him. Yeah, last time he came second to the favourite here, didn't he? Gath Goy. Yeah, I don't know if that's right, but yeah, he came second to that horse last time by a neck. He's £4 better off for that. He should improve plenty from that. I'd have to fancy him to have the beating of that horse. Uh, Fruit Delane, you know, he had some time off in, in the RSA. He took a bad fall, didn't he? But he weren't, he were in that race that day. Um, he were coming with a good, good looking run. And I think he'd have gone close. That's good form, that is. Now, he is off 154 here. But I'm sure Gordon's going to put, um, he's going to take seven off him. Bring him down to kind of one four seven. Yeah, I think sixteen to one's a big price for him. So I'll have two points each way on him. Um, right now we've got four points. Banbridge, five to two, non-running no bet. We'll leave that be. You can't really tackle that race till you know what the ground is and if Banbridge is running or not. You know, it could possibly, if we don't get much more rain, it could dry out to good to soft for Thursday and, and he'd be a strong bet for me, Bambridge. If he's not here, I haven't really gone through the race in too much depth, but the one I was kind of wondering about, I've got in the back of my mind for it, is that Garlo that they've supplemented last time I looked. I think he were around 20s. I'll have a look at him, I think, if... Uh, it comes up a bit softer, but I'm not definitive on that. I haven't really gone into it too much depth, but they did take the trouble to supplement him. Right, Stayers, yeah, no Irish point. He's the bin. We had three points on Crambo at 11 to 2. So, what we'll do here, we'll have another three points on him at 5 to 1 general. So, we've got six points Crambo now for the Stayers. Yeah, if. Uh, He'll, he'll be staying on strong up that hill. He will. Uh, we've talked about him before, so I'm not going to go too much into these horses now. Uh, play one Cribilli, four points at fives. We'll stay there with that. Mare's Nobby Third, all right. We've got Bright Day Z, three points at tens. Jade de Grugy, we've got two points at sevens and six points at five to two. So we've gone big on this race, but we've got the front end of the market, you know, uh, sort of tied up there. But we've got six, eight, eleven points on this race. It does look a three-horse race, and the third one's there's Dice or Enos. I said we've got to cover this for our money back. So we're going to have three points on Dice or Enos at nine to two at Coles. And if someone else wins, it does. But I, I'll, I'll be amazed. You know, I think it's between these three. We talk loads about this race, aren't we? Three top, top, top draw mares. These They'll be winning any of any recent runnings of this mares. And obviously, heard of any of these would be winning. I slightly favour Jade de Cruz, as you might well know. But I love, love Bright Days. I do, and I've got one bet. That might be running on to her that would be nice I'll get a mention at the end but uh, right and the Kim Muir right yeah Kim Muir I know the way you're thinking we track this horse all the way through all season and I've dropped the ball here I suppose because I've not put it up and it's four to one <laughs> you know we, we can't I can't put it up at four to one I can't so you know, so the bet I'm going to put up here is whack a clam for Henry, and we're going to have two points each way on that at 12 to 1. We'll get a good one for our money with this horse, he'll be up there all the way. He's got course form, stays well, sure to be in the mix. I think, uh, gave him a blowout 
over hurdles the other day, ran nice really. I'll just put him spot on for this. Yeah, you get a big run for your money with Wacker Clan. 12 to 1 is fine. We'll have two points each way on that. Right then, last day, Friday. Triumph, we've got a point on Majbra at 20s. We're just going to stay there. Uh, Sergino and Galloping, I'm not going to put them up here at sort of 11 to 10, 5 to 4 for like six points or out. I'm just not. But personally, on the day, I will be looking to get on those horses. Uh, if I haven't got anything running on to them, I've tried a few multis, so I might have something on them anyway. Uh, we're not going in again, so we'll just stay there. Point on Majbra at 20s. It's a nice bet to have anyway. The county, yeah, as you were the other day, we've got two points on Lee de Sud at 12, uh, 11, sorry, and two points each way, Bialystok at 12s. Albert Bartlett, yes, yeah, we've got six points reading Tommy Rong at 7 to 1, and two points on Shanna Bob at 10s. The Gold Cup, we got three points on Jerry at eights, a point on fast or slow at twenties, and a point on gentleman's game at twenty fives. I think Gallopin wins, I do, and I'll be backing him. But that's what we got. Mare's Chase. <laughs> Yeah, we got Allegory out of the recycle bin at six. As I forced my centre to look at this race again, and we're going to have four points on Limerick Lace at five to one. I can't, you know, Dino Blue might win. I'm not saying it won't, but she's got beat at Cheltenham twice. You know, first year she was a bit keen, last year maybe a little bit keen again, and she belted the last two. She's never done two and a half. I've got to be against her, I have. Um, but at the same time, you wouldn't be shocked if she won it. But I think we've got to back this Limerick Lace, really, 5-1. to one. You know, ran a cracking race in Troy Town. She looked really good last time at Donny. Not much her race, but she looked good. She's She's got pace, she stays. 5-1 to one looks a Fine price, to be honest. So we'll have four points on her at fives. And we've got the point on Allegory already at sixes. That's that race done. And the last race there, we've got K de Bourbon. We've got two points at nines and two points at fours. So that's like four points, 13 to two. We've got Waterford Whispers, two points at tens. And What's Up Darling, two points at 25s. And that's the lot. Okay. Right then. Nap of the meeting. As I said before, some at a bit of a price, although he has got a bit backed in now, uh, reading Tommy Rong and the Albert Bartlett. Yeah, I like him. Um... Multis, people asking me what multis I've had and stuff and you know, I've had loads that have just not even got here. I'll be having less next season early on. The one I did get through, you know, I like to say, but people were asking and I'd, I've got a Trixie and a Treble through. It's the only one really that's uh, got through. And that were Lozzy Mouth at 7 to 2, well, Fabiello 7 to 4, and Bright Days Ed at 10s. So if, if those three win, yeah, I'll, I'll be in profit for this Jaltham anyway. You know, I kind of think the last one, I think Jay DeGruzzi might do me, but I've tried to sort of load up on her a bit to soften the blow. So, you know, I do sort of favour her now. But saying that bright days, I'd have loved that horse. We've been rear from, you know, back to after watching the first run in a bumper, so. Right, the multis, anyway, yeah. 
Right, we'll have one go at a multi, and this is going to be a retirement multi, this. We're not messing about. I'll just put one up. I mean, you know my sort of horses I like, so if there's any you like as well out of them, maybe just mix a few tricks and whatever. This one's just a bit of a mad one. Uh, we're going for, let's say, you want a bit of an angle, something anyway, relatable. So, right, we'll go with Willie. Because he's going to smash this child that he is. Um, we, we don't want anything too short either. And I mean, I'm going through. I, I've got him on sort of two or three winners, maybe three winners, three or four on the Tuesday. Wednesday, he's going to smash it. I've got him on like eight winners after Wednesday. Another two on the Thursday so I've kind of got him on 10 winners going into the last day where I think he might pick up another couple so yeah I, I've got him on like around 12 winners which is you know yeah he, he could win he could win half the races you won't fall over if you won 14 of these you won't so So, we're going for six horses of Willies that are a bit of a price. We're going Embassy Gardens, which were 15. Right, these, these prices are with Paddies, I think, which is the best I can get on with, but you can get significantly better at Ladbrokes when I last checked anyway. So, Embassy Gardens, 15 to 8. Samajest five to one, Fasar Vega hundred to thirty, Jay De Gruzzi, two to one, Reading Tommy Wrong four to one, and Kader Bourbon seven to two. Uh, I always like playing one under, so six is like you know you're going to pay the mortgage off here if we get this. So what we'll do, we'll have six five folds for just like half a point and we'll have two points on the acker okay so that's like just five points we can live with five points on a multi can't we lad brooks the acker pays 5468 to one okay so do what you want with that Won't happen, will it? But it's tell them you've got to have a go. It's some crack if we come into that last race, and like we came to Bourbon, be laying a bit there off on Betfair, I think. So, yeah, that's just five points on a, a, a wild acre. Which brings our total then. Our total, we've got 149 points on. We've got 44 points in the bin, which is a total of 193 points. So that's what we've got to get back. We're wanting to get back about 50 points a day, I guess, aren't we? So it'll be fun to see if we can end up in profit. Hopefully we can. Um, yeah, it should be brilliant. Just remember this week, bet to your pot. You know, have an amount you're going to play with and don't go over that. So, you know, sort of spread it out a bit. Don't chuck all your butt on on Tuesday, like, you know. So, yeah, you know, be sensible with it. Do as, as brilliant as it is, it can be a dark, cruel place when things are going badly for you and they, they, they can go badly for you. They can, you know. Um, so, yeah, be sensible please uh but yeah enjoy it have fun it is it's brilliant uh look for like as i mentioned before kind of try to stay on script like have ideas for different scenarios you know races are you thinking if the ground comes up like this i'm gonna like this and if it comes up like this i might like this other one and have these sort of things in your head so then when they happen you're ready to react sort of thing and kind of although you want to be kind of flexible 
you want to kind of stay within that script as well if you know what I mean like you know you don't want to just start losing a few races and then just start spraying bets about randomly like you know you, you stay to what you kind of had in mind and uh, look for angles and relatable form you know um, you know you might like you know, the ground might look like it's coming up bad so you might chuck three sort of soft every grounds horses together in a trick see um, as we mentioned each way double and I'll never actually put it up on here probably should part of me but the uh like Quilixios and Safara say because Safara ran well against Quilixios so if Quilixios wins the arc or Safara is going to get hammered for the grand annual so like an each way double on them two could be nice um yeah when Sam Jess they left it out of the pipe so he came to the Coral Cup, so I'd like a double Sam Jest and K de Bourbon because Sam Jest is Willie's, isn't it? And he's took it out that and put it in there. And also did a double Sam Jest and Waterford Whispers because they're both JPs, aren't they? It's a JP Willie horse. So I'm thinking they moved it out of the pipe. They must kind of fancy maybe the chances in the pipe with these other horses. So I had a double on them too. So just like little relatable things like that you know um but yeah yeah it should be good it's been a good ride so far but the roller coaster starts now don't it this is like that bit at the beginning when it's just chugging up and chugging up and chugging up and then we're going to get to the top art and it's like wow and that's it it's just ups and downs and thrills and spills and it's just the highs and lows are just brilliant it is it is so enjoy it, enjoy it. I hope you have a brilliant Cheltenham. I do, I do. I hope you really enjoy it and I hope you back loads of winners. And uh, I will see you after Cheltenham more likely. Although, like I say, if there's something, I mean, the markets have come out now, haven't they, for next year, but they brought them out at the wrong time. I just haven't got the headspace for it now in trying to get everything kind of sorted for this Cheltenham. But if, you know, if I have any bets through the week for next year, I'll let you know. So it'd be a quick sort of five, ten minute video that evening if I backed anything. But yeah, enjoy it. And I I really, really hope you do really well. I do. I do. So uh, thanks for your time then. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.